this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on why I think InDesign is more capable of making social media posts more quickly than any other Adobe program, and we are going to do that utilizing text variables. Before we get started, whether this is your first or your fifth video, please go ahead and like and subscribe, leave a comment below. All that interaction helps our channel to grow and keeps encouraging us to make more of these tutorial type videos. Look at the graph. Look at how many of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe, especially if you have been watching this channel for a while. Let's get started. So a brief overview of my file here. Uh, this is a setup we have been using for some social media posts for a long time. If I show you my pages tab on the side here, you'll notice um, that I have labeled these such as Square S1, become a partner, social wide, and so on and so forth. Wide specifics, MailChimp, Eventbrite, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are shortened because InDesign doesn't let me type any more than those characters. So all of these have the same information on them. One to two on you. And one to two on you and one to two on you. I don't want to retype this every single time. And what I really, really don't want to do is open up six different Photoshop files every single month that we have an event, change out all the text and export them from six different files every time. Instead, what I'm going to do is utilize text variables in InDesign to speed up this process to get this done more quickly. I have to do this 12 times a year, so. Let's see if we can get this more efficient. Now, step one, what is a text variable? If you'll notice, when I highlight this text on the top of my panel, it highlights the whole line, not just the G. If I backspace it, it's all gone. Why, why is this happening? Well, this is a text variable. It has been inserted as a line of text, a single character, essentially. How do we make one of these? Just for the sake of example, let's say that we needed to add a bit of information to every single one of these slides, something that we don't yet have on here. So let's make a label with our text box here. Let's say that we need to say um, snacks included in this event, which is not true. But for the sake of example, let's pretend that they are. Now, I don't want to copy and paste this text box every single time or retype them. Instead, we are going to make a text variable out of this line of text. So I'm going to copy the text that I have made. And now let's go up to this menu. We're going to go up to type and then we're going to go down to text variables and define. We need to go to new. And then we want to give this text variable a name so we know what it is. I'm going to call it snacks. And we want this to not be anything other than just some custom text. So we're going to give it that label. There are other things you can do with text variables, such as make a running header for a book. You can put a file name in here, page numbers, so on and so forth. But all we need for this is custom text. So that's what we're going to select. Now, let me paste in my text, snacks included. Let's click OK. Now I'm going to click Done. Nothing's happened so far. Just so you can see what's going on, this is my regular typed out text. I'm going to lower this text box down. I'm going to click Enter. I'm on a new line. Now we're going to go up to Type. And then we are going to go down to Text Variables, Insert Variable. And I'm going to look for my new label called Snacks at the bottom. Now, this has been added as an entire character. As you can see, the whole thing's highlighted at once versus when I highlight this top one, 
all the individual characters are still alive. So why spend the time doing this? Well, let's say that next month, snacks are not included in the event. Well, I don't wanna to have to go through the whole document, highlight every single text box that says snacks included and paste it all in. Instead, what we can do now is go up to our text variables. We'll go to type, text variables, define, and we are going to go down to the label snacks. We're gonna edit it. And now we're gonna say snacks not included. We're even gonna put a little sad face in here just because no snacks this month. Now that we have updated that text variable, every single instance of that text variable will have updated in the whole document. One note about text variables. Watch this. They will always try to fit on one line, no matter what. You see this? See how it's smushing itself together? This is the one downside of text variables. They cannot flow along multiple lines. This is the primary reason that these characters and lines are not made up of text variables. These we will use a find and replace. Now, both of these methods will work to get the job done. I'm using a mixture of both for the sake of the example of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this text box. And now let's move on to method number two, the find and replace method. This method involves simply identifying some text that we want to change and then modifying it with the find replace. I'm going to do control F to open up the find change. So I'm going to simply copy this text, paste it into my find change. Make sure that you have a document selected or not selection. Now, what do I want to change this text to? I'm going to change this to whatever my September meeting is. Let me go grab that out of this email. The main title is overcoming the imposter. I want this to be in the big bold text. So let's copy that over. And we're gonna change this over like this. So let's make sure it's working before we commit all of the changes. Let's change this, perfect. These lines happen to be about the same length, so they're gonna work much more nicely. I think it's working well, so I'm gonna go ahead and change all. Perfect. Now we gotta change the subtitle. Now my subtitle is broken up into two different pieces here. I have with Bill Gannon, who is not the speaker for this month. Um, instead, this is going to be Chris Kelso, which I can find in my informational email here. So I'm gonna change all instances of Bill Gannon to Chris Kelso. And copy this in and change all. Excellent. And now the subtitle, networking skills that get you remembered. And what is the subtitle, the new one? Silence your inner critic and lead with confidence. Change all. Perfect. I have some settings already pre-made in this document that balance the lines, kind of make things look good without having to do too much work. A couple more details that need to be changed. The date is incorrect. Now, April is a very common word throughout this whole document. You could use find and replace to change it, or you could use text variables to change it. I have these set up as text variables, so we're going to use this method. We'll note that this is indeed a text variable of April 26th. So I'm going to go up to my type, text variables, define, and this one is Nabo date. I'm going to edit this one. And the new date is going to be September. I need to find out what the final Wednesday of the month in September is. 27th. Excellent. Now all of these have been updated. The time should remain the same. And then we also need to update this top line. We don't want it to say April meeting. We want it to say September meeting. So let's change the top line text. We're going to edit that. 
We're going to switch this text out to September. Okay, perfect. Done. And let's go through and make sure everything's looking good. Well, we're missing an instance of April here. We're going to do text variables to find novel month. We're missing month. Let's edit that. Make sure it says September. Very good. September, September. Yep, 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 yep. Very good. All right. The last thing we need to change in this document now is this picture. This is not the correct person. This is Bill Gannon, not Chris Kelso. So we need to make sure that we update this. Now, I don't want to delete this and put a new one in every single time. All we need to do is simply relink this file in. And I don't want to relink the file a whole bunch of times. As we can see, there is one overarching linked file with five various instances of that overarching one. I don't want to go in and relink this one and relink this one and relink this one. Instead, I'm going to relink all of them at once by selecting the top one and clicking the relink button down here at the bottom, this one. I'm going to now navigate to where my file is contained. It's good habit to make sure you have collected everything in the same folder. For example, I have 2023 event graphics all separated out into their own folder under Navo. And I have made a separate folder for September with a number and month label on them along with the speaker. Inside of here, I've made a folder for images, and this is where I'm going to find my speaker's headshot. I'm going to select this and hit open. Very good. This picture is a little bit smaller than my prior one. If it looks really fuzzy like this, not to fear. It is looking like this because we have a low quality view on for default. If you want to change this, go up to View, Display Performance, and High Quality Display. Very good. Now I'm going to do a little bit of manual repositioning to these images because there was a different aspect ratio than the original one. You won't, never want to squish your images. Make sure that you are holding Shift when you resize them so that they maintain the proper aspect ratio. Now this speaker didn't really give us a high resolution image. As you can see, this is pretty grainy and pixelated. Um, if this is too bad, you are going to need to request a better, higher quality image. Um, but this will probably work just for simple social media posts. So we're going to leave this as is. I'm going to scroll through here, make sure that these are all good. As you can see, I am adjusting the image inside of the frame. This red box is my frame. And inside of the red box, is a blue frame. This blue frame is the image itself, and it can move around inside of the frame. But I don't want to move the frame, simply the image inside of the frame. I'm going to adjust it to the outer edges while holding shift to make sure it doesn't get squished or squeezed. And there we go. I'm going to save my file with Control S. And I'm going to do a quick overview just to make sure everything looks good. You can do this by holding Shift W. And now I can click through my images at a big full size. It's easy for a review. Double checking the information. All looks good. All right, now it's time to export these files for use on the internet. Let's go up to File, Export. We're going to export them into the proper folder, making sure that I'm in the September folder. And let's make sure we're exporting JPEGs. I'm going to click Save. I want these images to maintain the proper aspect ratios that I have assigned to them in InDesign. To do this, we want them to have a screen resolution of 72 PPI. The rest of these settings can remain as is. We'll leave them RGB, progressive, and high quality is fine. We want to make sure that we're exporting all the pages, not a simple range. And we want to make sure that we're exporting pages, not spreads. Everything else looks good here. I'm going to click Export. For now, it looks like nothing has happened. But if we go back 
to our September folder, we can see that we have these JPEGs all exported. And if I hover over them to see, we can see that these have exported at to the proper sizes. I wanted these to export at 1920 by 1080, 1080 by 1080, 1920 by 1280, different sizes for different things. The last thing I do in this project is I go through and relabel uh, the end tags of these JPEGs so that everyone knows what they're for. I know, for example, that this file is become an event partner. So I'm simply going to get rid of this number two and change this to partner on the back. This one I know is our square social, so I'm going to label it as square. Number three, that one is our social wide. Number four is the social wide with specifics. Number five is MailChimp. And number six is Eventbrite. Very good. Okay, now these files are ready for sharing across the internet. And if you need to make any quick changes to them, Simply delete all of these JPEGs that are in here and then re-export all of them again. That's the easiest way to do that. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you can find some useful information in this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Comment below if this video helped you out or if you have any better suggestions. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.